My coach, you gotta be smart about booking freight. You gotta be smart about where you put your truck. You've gotta be smart about each load. And I say it a hundred times, I say it a hundred times again. Your most important load is your next load. What's up guys? Welcome, welcome back. I've got uh, two topics I wanna talk about today. Uh, one being, does nobody use a CB radio anymore? I had something interesting happen yesterday, or yesterday evening. And uh, I was kind of running outlaw and I didn't even know it. This Dodge and Scale House, actually I drove straight through the Scale Houses while I've been outlaw. And the number two topic is, top, topic is, why are people going out of business right now? I don't understand, I can't fathom it. Uh, but before we get into that guys, I'm gonna put this in the front of the video. Um, and so everybody see it. Do you, we all play games on our phone, right? Yeah, sure, we all do. And I'm just curious, do any of you guys on your phone play Matt Skills MX or Matt Skills MX3 to be precise? Um, that's a game I've played now for the last, probably since 2017, when it was Matt Skills MX2. And uh, I still play that one too when I'm bored. Um, anyway, I just wonder if I've got any subscribers. Ooh, these big old bumps in New Mexico are playing. I just I was just wondering if any of my viewers play that game. And if you do, um, let me know in the description and give me your uh, your gamer tag or your game name and I'll add you as a friend and uh, maybe even join my team. Uh, anyway, I'm just curious. Uh, it's a very fun game. It's about motorcycle racing, uh, MX style, uh, dirt bikes, and uh, man, it's a super cool game. And it's all about racing other people racing the clock, um, riding wheelies, doing scrubs, whipping, over, whipping it over jumps and stuff. I mean, if you're an MX guy, motorcycle guy, and you like that, go try it out, join us. Uh, like I said, if, even if you jump in there and download the game, uh, let me know in the comments what your uh, game name is and I'll add you as a friend and uh, maybe we'll race together. But I know a lot of people think, and I'm a grown man, I don't play games, but let me tell you what. I'm 45 years old, right? And in my team, uh, all the group of people that I race with, they're, I think the youngest one is like mid 20s. And that's one. The rest are low 30s to mid 50s. So I guess even if we are 45, 50 years old, we're still part of that generation that grew up with games. So we still play them. Anyway, it's a badass game. So let's get on the topic here. Yesterday, uh, I'm going to talk about this one first because the second topic, I want to make more videos about it and go more, further into detail. But the first topic is, do people not run radios anymore? So, let's dive in. So yesterday, coming out of Phoenix, right? I came out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I went up through 87, caught 260, jumped on 40, and started hauling tail back east, going to uh, Jersey. And right after I got on the interstate, somebody honked at me. As they rode by, I threw up my hand. And they kept going. Uh, didn't think it's no big deal. You know, a lot of a lot of people that see my channel on here, and you, you guys ride by me sometimes, and you honk the horn, wave. It's nothing no out of the norm. And I'm like, all right, hey, man, how's, how's it going? He went on, and within about 50 to 60 miles, somebody else honked at me, and another 50 or 60 miles, somebody else honked at me, and this guy kind of stopped and was pointing at something, and I'm, I grabbed my mic. And I was like, I've done that with two of them. Grab the bike and they're like, and then they just floored it. And I was like, if you're gonna honk at me, at least have a way to tell me why you're honking at me. I'm looking at my mirrors, I'm thinking, am I smoking? Do I got cargo going out everywhere? Do, what, what freight flying out my doors? No, everything looks, looks good. So I, pull, I proceed to pull over, and this is right as I'm getting to Gallup, New Mexico. So I pull over, hit, hit the shoulder, and I've got a, uh, a trailer tire out on the um, driver's side, rear outside, and uh, had a blowout. Now here's the thing, thing about blowouts. Sometimes you will hear them, sometimes they, the, the, the sound of them popping just scares the bejesus out of you and makes you think somebody just shot a shotgun at you because you can feel the power of that explosion of that tire. Now this one, it was solid, never knew. Anyway, it's a. Uh, it didn't have a blowout. It basically just ran the tread out. So it is technically a blowout, but it didn't pop. The tread went out. Uh, even whenever 
I don't know how long that, that tire was out because when I started driving in Scottsdale, I went all the way up to 40 and all the way over to Gallup. So somewhere in, in that period, that time frame, I had that happen. Now here's where I'm outlawing it. I'm driving all the way through the state of Arizona on the last day of the blitz. And anybody could have seen that, pulled me over, gave me an inspection, got to the But what really is crazy is when I got to the scale house in New Mexico and went through the scale house with a blown tire. Luckily, I didn't know it was, it was like that, or I don't know if I could have had the uh, courage to proceed uh, but getting there. So anyway, I got to New Mexico and uh, decided that I needed to do a dry, or a trailer tire. So that did hold me up last night for about three and a half, four hours because it was a little slow, uh, but no worries, I got it fixed. And the thing is, if somebody would have just had a radio, they could have told me. Now, I'm loaded pretty heavy, so I've just been be bopping about 60 miles an hour minus today I'm making up for time so I've been 65 to 70 today but yesterday I was just be bopping along about 60 and I ain't no telling how many trucks passed me and nobody could have keyed up and told me on the mic now I do got to squish down a little bit to keep the static and the fuzz but my radio is always on and if you holler at me and I don't answer you because I'm on the phone and well I'm talking to the life or something but my radio is always on and not one person decided to, to get on the CB and let me know that I've got a blowout on my tra trailer. Now, three people did honk at me and try to tell me, but they didn't even have a CB. So that was kind of interesting. So I'm like, man, it don't take much. Put a damn CB in your truck. That way you can conversate to other drivers when something's going on. Uh, it's uh, Sometimes it's a life or, death, life or death tool, especially if you're on 80 in Colorado in a blizzard and you run up in a foggy snow crash and you bam you, you became another statistic but if you had a radio you would known about it miles if not 100 miles before that crash you wouldn't knew about it anyway it could be a life or death uh, for a lot of people not include not just yourself but an innocent family in a four-wheeler on vacation so life or death need a cb radio and always keep it on if you even if you just watch it out keep it on so you can be notified with stuff coming uh, coming up on you. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is how and why are so many people going under in this trucking today? I've been talking to some of my, my buddies and uh, we've been going over some numbers and all the people that's falling out of trucking right now. And also, not only the people going out of trucking, but, but what people are saying, it's kind of like a, a hit and miss. Some people are Debbie Downers, the market's trash, I'm going out, I'm about to lose everything, or I've already lost everything, versus people that says, I'm doing all right. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, because what I'm gonna share is what I think. You know, the rates, man, it, it, it is what it is. We can't really control the rates. So you gotta be able to duck and weave. Uh, and roll with the punches as far as the, the, the freight rates are concerned. But you do have control over the, how much money you spend going down the road, hence it's why I slowed down. Uh, that saved me a couple hundred extra dollars a week, um, uppers to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year by slowing it down. I've got control over that, so that's why I do it. <coughs> I do not have control over rates. Yeah, I've got ability, the ability to negotiate and build rapport with the brokers that I run with and get a better rate. And I do pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Um, with, with, with my driver out here, with Stoney out here running the truck full time on the load board, um, I'm back out here trucking and running these rates, like Stoney, um, he's had I think two or three loads that was $1.60, around $1.50, $1.60 but they were short hops in a bad area. Um, most of his loads are two to three dollars a mile. In today's current trucking, and I'm talking about April and May 2024, uh, the first week out in his truck, he put down $6,800 in revenue. Um, for the following month of April, he ended up putting down $22,000 in revenue. And so far he's and he went home. He, he had a good week and a half home or so, maybe two weeks. And uh, he's on course to do the same thing this month. Um, 
since the last week and a half. I'm thinking, I ain't going to get there. I'm just saying he's doing really well with me booking his loads. Now, that tells me either I'm super blessed or I'm damn good at what I do. I'm going to take the latter. I'm going to say I'm damn good at what I do. Because you got to be smart about booking freight. you got to be smart about where you put your truck. You've got to be smart about each load. And I said it a hundred times, I said it a hundred times again. Your most important load is your next load. You always got to set yourself up for the next load. Just because you see that hot load going into Denver, don't take it unless you see a load coming out. Uh, because you can go to a, a cheaper, a cheaper, I wouldn't say that. i say you take a, a lower rate per mile and put that truck in another hot market and vice versa. And just keep on regurgitating, cut and copy and paste the same thing. That's a recipe for success. But anyway, this video ain't about how to do it. I'm just saying, what do you guys, leave me, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think is going on with people? Because I'm coming up with a couple different scenarios. One, you're leased on with a company and you run their line haul stuff and you don't have access to other freight, um, other brokers or, you know, kind of like I was when I was at Roadrunner. In the latter years at Roadrunner, I couldn't run broker freight no more. I could only run Roadrunner freight. So I was at a ceiling. I could only make a dollar twenty to dollar thirty a mile. That was my ceiling. I couldn't make no more than that. Hence why I left. Um, so I, I think a lot of people that are not making it, they're they're limited to the company they're leased onto, and they can't, they don't have the option to be on the open spot market, the open board, so to speak. They don't have access to more freight. Let me give you an example. Some years ago. Like something just bit me on the leg. Anyway, um, to give you an example, a few years ago, a uh, buddy of mine, Danny, he was at Landstar. He's a Landstar BCO. And me and him met up. We was hanging out in Oklahoma City. And at the time, we was comparing the that market or that load board, open market, to Landstar load board. And in a 100 mile radius, he had 40 loads available. And in a 100 mile radius, I think I had a little over 400. So it was a bigger arena of loads available. So I think one of the Debbie Downers is people that are leased onto companies and they're limited on what they can haul. And the number two Debbie Downer, I think, is the guy that went into, wait, let me back it up. Based on what I've done with Chris and myself, if you put down $6,800 a week and you stay in that, that anywhere from five to $8,000 a week and you can't stay in business for at least three, well, let's say you do that consecutively for like three weeks out of the month. So you're not going to need work for $15,000 to $25,000 a month. At that point, I ask you, how much money per month do you need to stay in business in this shitty trucking economy? I'm just curious. I'm just curious because do you need $25,000 a week? I mean, really, how much money do you need to stay in business? Because in this market, that's what we're doing. That's what me and Chris are doing. Anyway, moving on, the next Debbie Downer, I'm thinking, uh, just just my opinions, guys. I'm just, that's what I'm asking you. Uh, is the person that bought the truck in the truck in high when trucks were 220 to 275 on a, on, a, on a brand new truck? Even used trucks was $140,000, $150,000. And trailers, Jesus. You, and trailers, it's going for like $100,000 just for a drive in. Maybe that second style. Debbie Downer in the trucking industry today is the guy that went in debt for that overpriced truck and trailer and not to mention their new authority new, new uh, authority insurance and they're paying anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000 a year for insurance. Now that might or may not have a fixed cost of six dollars to $10,000 a month just on your truck trailer and insurance let alone fuel. So at that point I understand you need to make three four dollars a mile to make freight or to make to make ends meet. So I'm just curious because I just don't understand, guys. And uh, there's a reason to my madness. I put a video out many years ago um, that basically said keep a truck payment of $1,500 or less uh, a month and get a trailer for $500 or less a month. And uh, you're, going, you're normally going to be good because the lower monthly obligation, the lower your fixed expense is per month, the easier it is to stay afloat. Now, my truck now is paid for. My trailer's paid for behind me. 
but the new Pete, I got a payment on it. I've got a, a lease payment on the trailer. So even with those fixed expenses, with insurance, let's see, with truck and trailer, I'm right around 16 and some change, and 700 and some change on insurance. So 16, uh, 22, 2300 bucks is my fixed expense on that newer to me truck trailer insurance combo. So right out the gate, my fixed expense is say $2,500 on that. And there's guys out there that's got fixed expenses two or three times that. So I get it. I'm just curious. Anyways, guys, we, if you like what I'm, where I'm going with this and you want to have more details on how to run or operate a better business model in trucking, I've made a video a long time about it, a long time ago about it, but I'm always open to make another video because it gets crushed down into the, uh, the archives and stuff. People don't see it. And I've got a lot of new more, <laughs> a lot new more, uh, where are you? Where the hell are you from, boy? Uh, I've got a lot more subscribers than I do did at the time, so most people haven't seen that stuff. Anyways, uh, I might put that in the video in the near future. So, yeah, so guys, if you like this video, give me a big old thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. I put videos out on the regular on things trucking. Until that next video, remember, it don't make sense, it don't make dollars. Goodbye. So